how did the other room go? Are you talking about the room that was controlled by Alexis or or Alexis in the and Harry's room? Good, I think from my perspective, it was uh, we heard from a few people shared some ideas which were um, fantastic, really great. All the, all the ideas that were shared was really great. So, so can I, Sydney, would you mind if I shared uh, your, your idea a little bit? Because I think it's a great example of, of why it's so important to start and think about uh, the needs and, and, re and, and thinking about what needs, because there are lots and lots and lots of needs in any space. Um, so Sydney, do you want to share what originally you had proposed as, as a need? Yeah, sure. Um, so myself and my friends um, have various like levels of mobility impairments, I guess, and like limitations getting around campus specifically. Um, and so we kind of saw this need of, well, how do you kind of know features in your environment before you go, right? Like, how do you know if there's gonna be potholes if you're biking or if there's gonna be curb cuts or where like the handy van will drop you off or if um, like the LRT, like the, the train is out and you know, all those things. How do you know? How do you know if an elevator is out or if there's an accessible washroom, so. So originally when we started discussing the, the idea of, of what's the need here, um, and the need was to be able to understand uh, the environment in advance so that you can plan your um, journey or you can plan your, your trip and understand where you're getting into. Um, and so we started with that kind of concept. Um, but when we started talking about it, the problem or the challenge is that it's actually one need of many. Another need is how do you source that information? How do you evaluate that information? Um, how do you then share and distribute it? So we started, Sydney started telling us how there are already a number of companies that have tried to do this. And Alexis uh, said, I'm on board if you could figure out how to make this sort of work and useful and, um, and uh, utile. And so in the discussion, one of the things we started thinking about is, well, maybe there's a different need here. Maybe the need isn't actually to be able to give information to plan. That is, that it, there is a need there for sure, but maybe the reason it's been so challenging is because there's a bigger need or a, a more fundamental need on how do you collect that data and how do you collect that information? So maybe it's not about the app that people are already trying to do. Um, maybe the need is actually to rethink the Google photo car or whatever they call that, I'm not sure. So what if the need is actually to produce something that is like Google's um, mapping vehicle that can be used uh, by uh, attached to a wheelchair or some other mobility uh, uh, adaptive device that allows you to gather that data and be able to code it with using machine learning, I guess, or something. So then that would allow people to provide, collect it and then share it because unless you find an easy way to collect and map that data to begin with, it doesn't matter how wonderful your app is, um, it's not gonna be as useful until you solve that need for collecting uh, new and up data and updating it. Does that make sense? The point that I wanted to make here is very important and how starting and refining your need up front really changes the way you are going to develop your ideas. Because in this particular context, developing another app 
doesn't actually solve the issue of how do we keep this information fresh and how do we encourage people to collect it? I, I know um, just even on a similar type of topic, I, I use an app myself uh, that basically is like a GPS um, to track um, when I'm pushing my chair and I really want to, I don't want to know, it's not on the track. I, I can't count my laps to figure out my distance. Um, I turn on map my fitness, uh, which maps where I am in the world and I can travel wherever I'm going and know the distance I'm pushing. Um, I don't know elevation, and I think there's some funkier things out there that track elevation as well, which would feed into Sydney your difficulty for you know the access angles that people are are getting to. Um, but you can work together with some things I think that are live out there already. Yeah. Well, I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Joseph. I just wasn't sure like how much I should you know, talk during this thing and how much I should share with other people. But I would say also that, so why this kind of started as well is because in my research lab, we've developed like a Fitbit for wheelchairs, right? So it's a, a hundred dollar component thing that you put on either wheel instead of paying like $20,000 for a smart drive. Um, and then you can, you know, track how you're going throughout your day and you can track if you're overexerting and you can track your routes and you can see how you're doing. And um, yeah, so we have tons of ideas around this. I can go on and on and I just don't want to take up all the time. So yeah, but really great considerations though. Thank you. But, and I think this is when you submit your, your video or your concept pitch, this is where we can look at how, what kind of, um, mentorship and what kind of uh, support that you might need. Um, so when you start thinking about, you know, the, the Fitbit, and if you were now that we, if we think about the, the greater need of coding and making it easy to, to share that information, maybe what it, in addition to the, the technology itself, is there a way to make um, a system of, you know, there is a curve here, or this is not accessible, or there is a ramp here. And that kind of, um, th that kind of information, if there are easy ways of coding it, becomes shareable with a broader community, like photo radar ahead or construction ahead with ways then and that becomes a huge value add because it's not just a fit bit it's now about the original thing that you talked about is making uh, a decision a travel decision making guide and an aid mapping the topo topography as you were saying okay that's so that uh, that's really great. I, I'm looking forward to hearing some of these ideas. So the next uh, 20 minutes, um, then in your uh, PowerPoint was uh, a, a what problem are you trying to solve? So if if in this case, if the need is how do you share information? What are the problems to sharing information in this way? Um, so for example, what I can just think off the top of my head. Um, and, and I encourage all of you to start writing about your individual needs or areas. Um, in Sydney's case, for example, one of the problems that I can see is how do you develop something that collects information um, that's easy to um, interact with? So if, if I have mobility issues to begin with, or issues recording information. Um, how do I tell the device there's no ramp here? Um, in an easy way, that is, is it an icon that, that I press? Is it a word that I say? Um, is it both that the system then records 
and then flags it as uh, and I don't I don't have it set up. Let me return to it. So I want to also be kind of, uh, very specific here. We're not actually sharing, um, you know, patentable um, uh, intellectual property yet. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in coming sessions. Um, but the stuff we're sharing, the problems, um, these are not, don't, you shouldn't be afraid to share these issues. The, these kinds of things are not um, based on, these are not intellectual property. These are not things you want to be protective of. Um, saying things like even the Sydney said, you know, we're working on a, on a Fitbit type thing for a wheelchair. That in itself, you need to be able to share that kind of information to get feedback, to get mentorship and to have discussions without releasing your secret sauce or your patentable thing. The reality is there are probably 10 other groups in North America alone that are working on similar kinds of devices, maybe even for very similar applications. Um, and by not sharing that, you're actually limiting your opportunity to improve the functionality and the value um, uh, of your device. That doesn't mean that you should be releasing your secret sauce and saying, we do this. So there's a fine balance as an innovator, as an entrepreneur between sharing concepts and ideas and feeling free to be able to improve what you're working on uh, and giving away your secret sauce, which we will talk about. Okay, so here are the things that I would suggest. What are the problems to, that are creating that need that you talked about? So, um, uh, I may, I, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce your name. I probably butchered it in my apology, but you were talking about the need for exercise. So what is limiting the, the, what are the problems that are creating that need? And in your case, we identified uh, care workers that don't know how to use the equipment, um, uh, problems of motivation and coaching perhaps, um, we, we've identified the uh, devices that people don't know how to put on properly or measure, a lack of availability of, of uh, um, interventions that might be useful to people um, or that give you the right kind of feedback and measurements. So as a group, the five whys is a strategy of trying to get at the core problems. Um, ask them, why is this a problem? And keep asking why five times, whatever the answer, try and frame another why question around it. And the goal of this is to sort of dig deeper down to see where are the, the, the strong problems that for us to try and work on. Um, with that, shall we break out into rooms again? And uh, please, uh, hopefully it'll be random a little bit again. Um, and uh, Alexis and, and, and Terry, um, you'll, uh, you'll be in different rooms uh, to sort of lead the discussion, uh, but try and ask the why questions. And with that, we'll break up and we'll come back in about 15 minutes and then just wrap up for the, this workshop.